This is episode 33 of me sitting down once a week to talk about life and business and help you live a happier, more fulfilled life. Welcome back to Monday Diaries. Oh my gosh. We did some remodeling of the apartment when we got back because we're prioritizing the workstation. Liam and Shire aren't giving me a desk because they don't want me there. That's not true. We're actually going to put a large communal table there and get rid of the standing desks as much as I love them. Uh, anyway, let me zoom in and sit down. As always, this is going to be a raw one take update, but I do sort of bi-weekly POV videos. I know I've been saying this for a couple of weeks. I'm like 95% done on the recent ones. So go check that out. It'll be up like tomorrow or the next day. Um, and also with this video, you can just turn your screen off and listen to it if you want. Go do the dishes or drive or whatever you need to do because it is mostly audio that you need to pay attention to. First things first, like always, a speed update on the business. I Love Mondays on the screen right now. We have had 197 applications, which is up 19 from last week. That's probably one of our biggest weeks application-wise. We've accepted 36 members, which is also our biggest intake of members. Uh, we had seven this month, and the average age of the members is about 26, and they're all lifestyle founders from all over the world. In the interest of being transparent, we've done over six figures with the business now so far since we launched and just starting to get the momentum. So still very difficult business to build, big moat around it, um, but starting to put the right systems in place to actually grow it. And uh, I believe we'll still be on track for 100 members this year. There were probably three things that led to us having our biggest month and, and the growth. One is that we're now increasing the membership for every five founders that join. This is a really natural scarcity, but also improves the value within the community. Number two is that we implemented uh, an email that basically goes out three days before we open our doors because we only open doors one day a month and um, just kind of says, hey, we're about to open doors. Uh, this is your last opportunity to get involved. And then when we close doors, we also send an email. So it, again, adds that natural scarcity of, oh, shoot, I've missed out. Um, and then the next month, they're more likely to, to get involved. Um, and we also posted that on social as well, which had a, a really strong impact. That was the first time we've done that. So definitely going to keep doing that. Third, we just finished our founder residency in Lombok, uh, which is obviously a great opportunity to share behind the scenes what we get up to and give people a really authentic look into our lives and just great marketing material in general. So I think the timing of that really helped with, um, yeah, making helping people make decisions on getting involved in the community. Next, personal brain growth stats. I'm at 5,642 subs on YouTube. That is, again, my biggest week ever. I think I gained 1,600 subs. Uh, so thanks to you guys for being here. Instagram is at 151K. That was down about 200. And TikTok is at 327.6K, which is up about 50. So nothing uh, transformational there. Out of Monday's Instagram is at 4,094, which is up about 300 from last week. So honest update is that I'm feeling incredible being home after three months and six days on the road and back into our space, which we've recently shaken up and, and made new. And I'll be home for about 2.5 months and then over to Indonesia for my best mate, Cammy's wedding. And then after that, uh, the next founder house, which is gonna be in Noosa, the East Coast of Australia, that's happening early November. So yeah, first time, I think anytime you've been on the road for a few months, it's so nice to get home and into a routine, but this time also feels different because I have such a clear focus and I heard something recently that really summed it up and it was that procrastination only happens when you're forced to do things that you don't actually want to be doing and all of my life I've struggled with procrastination in different forms and now for the first time I feel like I'm actually just actively wanting to wake up in the morning and Elena and I have been up at like 5.30 every morning just to start doing things because we want to and that shift has just made all the difference for me. Uh, oh, and one more thing, we are hiring a YouTube editor slash strategist. Uh, so if that sounds like you or someone you know, email me. I'll put email on the screen, the at artofmondays.com. And uh, this will be a paid gig with a lot of growth potential, including probably performance bonuses, uh, but something that I need to delegate more of because it takes a lot of my time, despite how much I love doing it. Uh, yeah, just need some help with it. Big win of the week is that I've earned my first ever passive income 
And it was interesting. I asked our community a while back uh, what passive income streams people have. And I was really surprised to see that most people don't have passive income. Even founders who are building things, they have very active income or kind of semi-passive income. For me, that came from YouTube. I got monetized uh, recently and I paid like $10 or something very, very small. But weirdly, it kind of feels like that first ever sale you get you know, in, in a business and uh, very, very small, but I haven't posted a video for a week and that's just ticking over. Uh, and also feeding into my newsletter growth, which is just like, it's a cool feeling just to know that overnight there's just people reading more of your stuff and, pe- and also you're earning money in ad revenue. Not that I'm trying to monetize that much, but uh, yeah, that was a little win for me. And secondly, I'm the most unscheduled that I've ever been in like the last 10 years. Big lesson for the week and this ties in with the title of this video and it was actually inspired by a guy called Alex Smith. He wrote No Bullshit Strategy, which uh, I really love that book. And in a recent email, he titled it Everything I Know About Business in Three Bullet Points. And it was honestly some of the best advice I have ever seen. I can't believe it took me 10 years to hear it or figure it out. And it was this, number one, all business is nothing more than an attempt to create something people want and are prepared to exchange money for. Number two, your ability to receive money for that thing is directly correlated with how hard it is for people to get it from somewhere else. And number three, the more you increase these two metrics, i.e. desire for the thing and scarcity, the more money you will make. And it's so relevant to business, but it's also so relevant to like any career that, that you're in because you need to have something that people want and are willing to pay for, obviously. And then you need to make it hard for people to get it anywhere else because that basically positions you as the only option rather than the best option. And that ties in with some other learnings from his book, which is that everybody wants to be the best. In business, they you know talk about how they have better materials or better pricing or better technology. And better is not a good strategy only is a good strategy because when you're the only person that does X, you're truly differentiated and able to command your own prices. Great way to test this is with uh, the opposites test. And basically what that is, is when you decide on a direction in your company, what would be the opposite of that direction? For example, we make the best coffee in town. Basically insinuates that everyone else makes shittier coffee than you. So what would be the opposite of the best coffee? The worst coffee. And the reason that's not a powerful strategy is because it's not differentiating from other people because it can't be true that people don't make the worst coffee in town. So instead, you could say we only make flat whites because it's a, it's a very different value proposition because the opposite can also be true. You can make all kinds of coffee. And that's where a true strategy is born because you are saying this is what we do and this is what we don't do. And other people can do that. Other people can occupy that space and you occupy your space and that makes you different. That makes you ultimately uh, more valuable, more impactful as a company. So be willing to say no to some things in order to have power and impact in the things that you say yes to. Uh, this could also be the country that you sell to. You know, We only serve Australia, for example, uh, or uh, the type of product that you sell, etc. Like pick and differentiate in that way rather than trying to be better or the best at something. And that was really impactful for me. That really landed and uh, is something I think about a lot with Art of Mondays and really any any sort of project going forwards. Finally, one thing to ponder or actually one thing to do right now is write a list of all the things that make your business different to your competitors. Then run the opposites test and you'll be really surprised to see how many of those things are actually not viable strategies and it's just a better type strategy where you're just trying to be better than somewhere else, someone else. So do that. Uh, Let me know in the comments if this was insightful for you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.